Hello, hello. How are you guys? Welcome back to Grandma Ray Don't Play, and I'm Rachel. I'm back. I'm back. I thought I would talk on a very important subject. If you let me know if you can hear me out there so we can get started, that would be absolutely great. Oh, I see one person. If you could let me know if you hear me, give me a comment on that. That would be great. I'd like to get started. If you could just say, Grandma Ray, we hear you. We're here uh, to let me know so we could get started. If you could give me a comment, that would be absolutely great. So we're going to be talking about eating too much salt. Oh, and what is it doing to our body? Oh, great. Jason, thank you for letting me know that you can hear me. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. First of all, I want to say thank you guys for um, tuning in. And we're going to have a great show. And I hope that uh, you guys uh, will participate back so that we can have an open dialogue. This subject is going to be eating too much salt. And what is that doing to your organs? So hello, Jason. Hello, Vanessa. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Wonderful. So I wrote down a lot of notes and I did a lot of research because, you know, one thing that uh, we don't know is how much salt is put into food, especially when you go to a restaurant or you eat pre prepared food uh, like canned food or any kind of uh, food that's uh, prepped for a long period of time. And and so what? How much salt should you be taking in? And what is that doing to your organs? I want to really, really get into that because it wasn't until recently that I even really uh, dived into this. And, you know, my foot was, one of my foot was constantly swelling and I didn't understand why. And it wasn't until I stopped taking in a lot of salt that I realized that that was the whole problem. And so then that's what made me look into what else salt is doing to our body, okay? So let me start. So the short-term effects of salt is it causes bloating and temporary rise in the blood pressure. Well, we all know about the blood pressure, uh, but we may not have necessarily knew that it bloats us, you know, so a lot of us have uh, bloated stomachs, bloated faces, um, and we didn't know why. Salt is one of the problems. Now, you do need a certain amount of salt in your life, but nowhere near the amount that we consume. Okay, Nancy, hello. Yes, yes, welcome, Nancy. So let's talk about the long-term effects of salt. It causes a rise in the blood pressure, increase the risk of stomach cancer. Listen to that. Increase the risk of stomach cancer. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Nancy, again. Good, good, good. Glad to see you here. Uh, it also causes heart disease and premature death it could cause. Now, can you imagine that something like salt could cause all of that? Stomach cancer, heart disease, it could cause premature death. Wow. So eating too much salt can be harmful. Why is eating too much salt harmful? Do any of you guys out there um, have a concern about eating too much salt or how much salt you should eat? Comment and let me know, okay? 
Salt is 40% sodium and 60% chloride by weight. Salt is also called sodium. So when you read on the back of the food that you buy, you know, it may say sodium or it may say salt. Those words are both the same. And um, so uh, Jason said 1,300 milligrams a day. Okay, Jason, for those who may not be familiar with milligrams, what does that equal to in tablespoons or teaspoons? Tell us that, Jason. Okay. Okay. So, um, salt, we do need salt in our body because it helps our minerals and fluids balance. And um, it helps the nerve transmission and uh, muscle functions. So salt so do have a function in our body. Okay. So do anyone know anyone who has high blood pressure? And are they on medication? And do you know if that person still consumes salt? That's a question I'm putting to you. How do high amounts of uh, salt affect your kidneys? Oh, boy. Well, too much salt causes kidney failure. And you know kidney failure, you end up on dialysis. My mother was on dialysis due to kidney failure. So, you know, we always think about kidney failure as maybe related to just a diabetic. Well, no, it could be from salt also. So imagine this. You, they got us used to the taste of salt because salt is in everything. So when we taste food, we say right away, oh, it's not enough salt in it. It's not enough salt in it. Well, that's because... Um, they have put salt in everything. Just about everything has salt. And so you are you going to be able to 100% get away from salt forever? No, you're not. But at least you do not have to add extra salt to add to the problem, okay? At least control the part that you can control, okay? Okay, so... It causes kidney failure. It reduces the function and remove less water. So it removes less water from your body. So you know when you try to go on a diet, uh, a lot of it is fluid. And wonder why the salt is not allowing the water to release from your body. Okay. Hi, Nancy. Uh, Vanessa, do you know anyone that have had kidney failure? Let's talk about it. How to lower your salt intake if, let's say, you have um, a lot of salt in you and you want to do something to reduce the salt, okay? So you can eat sweet potatoes, potatoes, greens, tomatoes, low-sodium tomatoes, white beans, kidney beans, non-fat yogurt, oranges, bananas, and cantaloupes. Those are all the things that you can eat to try to lower your salt that you've already eaten, okay? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so Sodium, we talked about it holds in water. And we also talked about a lot of our, the sodium that we intake comes from processed food and prepared food. And we also add salt to our food. Okay, so guess how much salt that you should be taking in in the course of a day? Oh, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. You ready for this? One teaspoon of salt a day. So, Jason, the answer is one teaspoon of salt 
a day. Can you imagine that? We put more than that <laughs> on 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 um some French fries. One teaspoon a day. Nancy says, I have high blood pressure for years. Okay, Nancy. So I hope that maybe you would consider uh, reducing um, salt. And so what I did is I went through my spice cabinet and I only got to half of my spices. I still got to go through the other half. And I found out it was so many seasoning, seasonings that has salt until I couldn't believe it. And so I said, okay, I've got to do a video on this because people need to know what uh, the manufacturers are putting in our food so that we can at least make a choice of our own. So I brought some of the seasonings to show you today. Okay, ground cumin has salt in it. Ground cumin. Taco seasonings have salt in it. Taco seasoning. Coriander. Make sure you can see that. Ah! <laughs> Coriander has salt in it. Coriander. Jerk seasoning. Jamaican jerk seasoning have salt in it. Honey sriracha has salt in it. Oh yeah, all these products, guys. Larry's seasoning salt has salt in it. So you see, this has the word salt right on it, plain as day. Whereas some of the other seasons that I just showed you, it doesn't say salt on the front label, but you go to the back and you'll see that it has salt. Uh, blackened Cajun rub, salt in it. Uh, Montreal steak, salt in it. Jamaican curry. Salt, salt in it. Jason says 1,300 milligrams equal a one half to two thirds of a teaspoon a day. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's pretty close. It said in what I looked up on Google, one teaspoon. That's pretty close. But you know, even if we can get to uh, a teaspoon or half, we're doing much better, aren't we? Okay, Vanessa said Montreal steak is her favorite. Well, they just slipped it in on you, Vanessa. They got it loaded with salt. You might want to check that out. And you know what? Grandma Ray, believe it or not, I'm going to sit down and study all of these items. And I'm going to learn how to make these seasonings and, and, and eliminate the salt. And I'm going to bring it back and introduce it to you all. How about that? You want me to do that for you all? Would that help? Huh? Ground turmeric, my favorite. Salt. Mm. Chili powder. Salt. Adobo, salt, loaded, garlic, and sea salt. They got the word right in this one, salt. So you see how slick they are? They add the word salt to some very few items. And the rest of the items, they don't even let you know that you're actually uh, eating a lot of salt. Worcestershire sauce, salt. Okay, so you get my idea? They have really, really, really um, loaded us up with the salt. And so it affects your heart, right? It gives you blood pressure and it affects your kidney. Oh, really? So you may say, oh, well, I'm fine. I don't have none of those problems. Oh, oh, you, 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 you don't know that you don't have those problems because what it does is, 
for well for the kidney, it doesn't allow the kidney to release fluids. So right away now, this is eating at your kidneys. Problem, right? If everybody could give it a thumbs up that's uh, in the chat right now, that would be absolutely great. I'd appreciate that. YouTube appreciates that too. And by the way, YouTube, this is Grandma Ray's opinion and um, uh, my opinion alone. Okay, so we're going to go back to it. Okay, Gina says, is, is sea salt healthier? I saw you used it in your cabbage. Uh, at this point, um, Gina, I am going to tell you that I am no longer recommending that you use salt, period. I think we're going to get enough salt in things that we don't know about, like ketchup and stuff like that. So, yeah, even the sea salt. As of today, I am no longer promoting salt because my job is to bring you um uh, nutritional facts that can help you stay alive, that can help you not to suffer. You know, if you ever know anyone that um, uh, have suffered as a cause, cause of high blood pressure or kidney failure, you want you don't want to go down that route at all. You're welcome, Gina. And, and so let's. I I also brought some items that are salt free because I didn't want to bring you one side of the coin. I wanted to introduce you to some things that you can use, okay, until we get this together. So this is Flavor Mate, and this is lemon pepper. And as you can see right there, it says salt-free. You see that? To clearly let you know, oh, buy this. This is salt-free, Okay. All right, so let me show you some more. They have two other products. This is uh, original by uh, Flavor Mate, and you see it says salt free. See that? And this one is garlic and herb, and it says salt free by Flavor Mate. Okay, they're letting you know. All right. Other things that I found is Miss Dash. Now, Dash have several different kinds. This one is everything but salt. It says salt free. Everything but salt. Okay. And this is by Dash also. And it says table blend salt free, salt free. And then uh, granulated onion is nothing more than uh, they take the onions and dry it out. And then that's what you get here, the granulated onion. Now, if it says onion salt, it has salt in it. Okay. You want granulated onion. Okay. And by the way, this is good to have. So if you don't have any onions in the house, you can at least still get the same onion flavor, okay? Uh, mustard ground, ground mustard, no salt. Perfect, perfect. And I know you're thinking, well, you, you know, maybe I don't use that much onions. Oh, well, you know what? Let's start using some of this stuff because now we have to build up our, our, our flavor and it, so that we, we don't miss the salt, okay? Granulated garlic, salt-free. They dry it out and then you get just the garlic. So far from what I can see, any herbs is okay without the salt. They don't usually put the salt in herbs. Now, I didn't know that until I started doing my research. So this is basil, or you may have some other kind of herbs. They're okay to use, okay? Chives, herb, good to use, salt-free. And then I found this new salt, salt substitute. I have not used it yet, but I did find this. Okay, and I wanted to show you this. 
So as you can see, there are products out there. So what I did is I went in my um, cabinets and it, on my spice rack and I started pulling down each um, spice one at a time. And then I Googled it to find out if it was any salt in it. That's very, very important. Very important. So do that. So that at least you'll know what you're doing and everything that has salt. I took it out of my, um, spice rack and cabinet, and I'm going to actually give that away to, uh, the trash, uh, so that no one else can be affected by the salt. Okay. Uh, Nancy says lemon pepper seasoning. Number one in ingredient in is salt. Okay. See, there we go. Where's the lemon pepper? See, so we can learn from each other. Okay. So that's something else that I'll take and, and not use. Okay. Now I'm not saying that you will never, ever, ever, ever use salt. Because it may be something that you're making, like, let's say you're making a cake from scratch. You have to add the salt in it. Or if you're making some yeast bread, you have to add the salt in it because the way they make that is they design it so that you need the salt. But, you know, so that's why I said you can't 100% get rid of the salt, but you can definitely control you not adding extra salt when at all possible, when at all possible. Okay. So at the times, like, let's say you're, you're cooking some chicken. Now you don't have to add the salt at that time, right? Because now you're in control of that. But let's say if you caught making a recipe and the recipe calls for salt, like I said, like a cake, you really don't have much of a choice because the cake won't rise properly if you don't add it, okay? Unless you add the salt substitute. Now, I have not uh, cooked with this salt substitute yet, but I am going to cook with it. I just bought it today for this video so I can show you. So we're going to see how this works. And I'm, I'm very interested to see if this works or not, okay? Okay. Uh, Vanessa said, thank you, Grandma Ray. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I want to know, if you were cooking um, some, some ground beef, would you be okay not using salt? Or let's say you was cooking some soup. Now, I am known for using chicken base when I cook soup. And chicken base has salt in it. I looked on the container, and it definitely has salt in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I bake some chicken during the course of a week. And so once you finish baking the chicken, you're going to pour some water in the bottom of the pan and scrape that up and then save that. And that's going to be your chicken base. So now you don't have to use anything that don't have salt in it, right? Okay. So you guys, you tell me if you have kids, do you think it's a good idea to switch from the salt now so that their taste buds won't be affected and they won't be looking for the salt content? And what do you think about McDonald's and Wendy's and all these fast food places that are loading us up with the salt? Even if you say, if you go to McDonald's and you say you want some French fries, but you don't want any salt on it. Well, they still dump the French fries in that pan that they already had salt in, um, uh, so you're going to, no matter what, get some salt. So they, they don't really have an option so that they can give you the product salt free. So what is the idea behind um, the industry giving us all this salt? Do you think that we need to now uh, confront these industries, um, they really, really harming us in a lot of ways, especially the ones that uh, you don't even let you know that you're eating salt. Uh, Goofy King says, hi, me. Hi, how you doing? 
You know, I, I think that we need to really think about all the things that, you know, is causing obesity, is causing us with the um, blood pressure, with the swelling. Oh, and I even read where salt um, makes your face puffy. It makes your face swell up. How about that, huh? Who knew that? Okay, you. I thought, you know, maybe your face is just <laughs> whatever it is, you know, like based on your size or something like that. But no, uh, definitely is a cause of what you put in you, which is salt, salt, sodium. Oh, my goodness. And so let's talk about canned food. Can anything, can sauce, can vegetables, can anything. The way they preserve the canned food is with salt. And so, you know, the problem with salt is you are not in control. I hate to tell you that, guys, but you guys are just not in control. The salt is in control. The manufacturers are in control. And you end up with the physical problem, physical problem. So let's try to cut back if we can um, to uh, eliminate the salt intake, okay? Okay, so those are some of the things that I wanted to talk to you about um, today. And also, while I have you on the on the phone, on the, um, live stream. Uh, this is another um, subject that I wanted to talk about. And that is, I believe his name was Ted Cruz, um, who took a plane um, and went to, I think it's Cancun, was it? You all correct me if I'm wrong. And he said he was taking his children um, with him uh, for vacation with their friends. And, uh, he left the state that he's supposed to be over, uh, to do that or, or to go over there for, uh, a, a, we don't know if it was a vacation or a period of time. What do you think about that? Okay. Gina said, we need to make more home cooked fresh meals for our family. My dad would never eat from fast food restaurants. My mother cooked three meals a day for us. Absolutely true. We really should. And Gina, how often do you eat at fast foods? Are you going to change now and, and start cooking more home cooked meals? You know, sometimes it may take, um, a longer period of time, you say, to cook every day. Well, you can double up on your cooking to cut down on your time so that maybe if you have to, you know, work every day or something that you're not uh, running out, running home and cooking every day. Maybe you can cook three or four times a week. Okay, I would like everyone if who's in the chat to give a thumbs up, please. That would be great. Uh, Gina said, I eat maybe one time a month on fast food. Oh, good for you. Good for you. It, it, it really makes a difference, Gina, because we don't know what they're putting in our food. We just don't know. And, and, you know, I even, um, uh, question not only what they putting in the food, but how are they preparing it and everything. We just don't know. Or how old is it? That's the other thing. How old is it? You know, sometimes you end up with a stomach ache after you leave these uh, restaurants and you don't know why your stomach is aching or you don't feel good or something like that. You just don't know. It's better to control that, you know? And I understand that everybody eats out once in a while because it's a form of enjoyment. But, you know, at what price? You know, maybe you can enjoy going to the movies better if if it's safe to do so. We know it's the um, time where everybody is locked in, okay? Or 
Uh, maybe they um, have, I don't know if they have a drive through where you live at, but they have drive throughs um, around my way. Uh, it's not that many. It's about two that I know of, uh, you know, or some kind of entertainment like that. Maybe you can put a movie projector up in the yard and go out in the yard if the weather permits. Uh, okay. Nancy says... You are 100% correct, Grandma Ray. Yes, and let's talk about the cost, okay? That's real, real, real important, the cost. You pay a lot of money to eat out. Even McDonald's is over $10 for one meal these days. You know, and really, you're paying out all of that money to get the salt intake? That, that's, that's insane, that's insane. We have got to save ourselves because life is too short. One second. Life is too short to suffer behind um, the salt or you enjoyed going out, but now here's the end results. Okay. And also, you know, me, myself, I'm a diabetic. So if the salt is going to destroy my kidney and the diabetes could possibly destroy my kidney, I'm doing a double whammy on myself, you know? So we need to really, really think about this stuff and say, no, no, we're not going to have that. We're not going to contribute to that, okay? And... um. I challenge you guys to come up with and let comment and let me know other things or other foods that you found that can bring you the same salt uh, satisfaction uh, that you might can add to your other meals um, that will make you feel satisfied. Okay. But I think after a while that you're going to be satisfied because once you um, get used to no, no salt, then you're not going to really be, um, worrying about the salt anymore. Anybody have any comments to me or any requests of me? You can, um, talk about that now or anything that you'd like to ask me. I'm here to answer your questions. Nancy or Gina or Goofy, any concerns that you may have? So while you're cooking your Sunday dinner tomorrow, maybe you might want to consider um not using the salt for the first time. And maybe you have time to uh, pick up a few of these no salt items and see if that makes a difference for you. I hope this has definitely um, brought some enlightenment to you guys uh, because I had to get enlightened. I had to, um, <laughs> I had to introduce myself to the reality. So now that I am familiar with the reality. I hope you guys are too. And I really thank you all for listening um, because you could have took a deaf ear, but you didn't. You really want to um, see how the salt is affecting you. And that means a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So Gina, does your you say your mom cooks three meals a day? Um, what kind of um, seasonings does she use? Does she use salt, um, or does she use very little salt? Um, you know, because we all need to know what to do with the salt and what not to do. Okay, what ingredients is in Miss Dash? Let me uh, see here. It's very small writing in green uh, paper. Can't see that one. Let me see if I can see. Okay, this is in white writing. I can see this one. Uh, I 
Okay, dried garlic, dried onions, sesame seeds, and poppy seeds. See? So we can just buy this. We can buy the dried garlic. Uh, we can buy the dried onions, sesame seeds, and poppy seeds. So let's say you're going to do the garlic, right? You can just, if you have granulated garlic already in your house, you can just use that, okay? And then you can make this up yourself. So this costs $2.99, and this is how many ounces? This is 2.6 ounces for this little thing, okay? So you can see that you're going to constantly have to go to the store and pay $2.99, right? So we're not going to do that. We're going to imitate this. We're going to go get these products here, okay? Or if we have some with no salt in the house, we can use that. And we're going to make up a big container ourselves. And now we don't have to constantly give Miss Dash $2.99, okay? So you can see how we can get this done, right? Gina, I hope that answers your questions. My mom used onion powder, garlic powder, and fresh herbs, peppers. See, that's what I'm talking about. So you see, your mom was on point. Gina, I would love to make my own seasoning. Okay, Gina. So I just gave you the ingredients for everything but salt, okay? And... Oh, God, I'm going to try to see this one. It's, it's got this green paper on it. Dried onions, black pepper, um, parsley, celery seeds, basil, uh, bay, marijuana, oregano, Savory, thyme, mustard, rosemary, cayenne pepper, dried garlic, orange peels, dried carrots. Dried red bell pepper, lemon juice flavor, and oil from a lemon. Okay, so you you can see how you can now make these products. Okay, now this one here is a uh, flavor mate. Okay, let's see what it has in it. It has onion spices, black pepper, celery, uh, celery seeds, marijuana, basil, uh, mustard, cayenne pepper, parsley, garlic, carrot, citrus, acid, and oil of a lemon. So you can see how we can just read these ingredients and get these ingredients and then you can make a big container like this and then you don't have to absorb these costs anymore, okay? So let's start doing that because, you know, it's not like they came up with um, all new products. No, these are products that's already on the shelf. We just don't know which ones to, to buy to make the combination, but now that we know we can just start doing that. Does that make sense, guys? Because, you know, you can't afford to continuously give them $2.99 for this little container here uh, that's 2.6 ounces. No, now, now, that's not going to work. It worked to get the uh, container one time to see what it is and, and to go from there. But if you can find out um, how to make it, you should do that, okay? Def and, and while you're doing it, you can give some to your family members, you know, as a gift, right? Because it's one thing to say you should cut back on salt, but, 
you know, most people don't change because they don't know what to do. So if you could help them with, with some of the one you made, then they can take it from there if that's possible. Okay. Gina, you're welcome. I'm glad you're going to try. We That's all we can do in this world is try, right? It means a lot if we just try. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and another thing you can do is have the kids to cook with you and say, oh, we're not going to use salt today. We're going to use this because salt is not all that good for you, you know, and, you know, let them know that you're not saying that you're never, ever, ever going to use salt because there's going to be some times that if a recipe calls for that and you can't get around it. But if you can do one of these uh, salt substitutes and you can add and submit that in the place of the recipe, then you, you still can do it. You know what I mean? It means so much that we save ourselves. That's very, very, very important. Life is full of changes, right? And so here we are. I'm 67 years old and now I'm just uh, trying to get off of salt. That's okay because it's never too late, right? Because we got one life to live. And who knows, I might be just saving my kidney just in time, right? Or I'm saving myself from that heart attack just in time. Now, I'm on blood pressure medicine. So I'm going to, uh, and I take my blood pressure every day. So I'm going to monitor my blood pressure and I'm going to write it down every day. And I'm going to see. After one month, I'm going to talk to my doctor to see uh, how much of a difference the uh, not consuming so much salt uh, makes. So to see if my doctor wants to adjust my medicine or anything like that. Because I do know that um, if they can adjust the medicine because I changed my habits on salt, that would be a real good thing. A real good thing. Oh, definitely. So, guys, any other questions that you have for me? Are you guys um, going to cook tomorrow? And what are you going to cook tomorrow? That would be something to discuss. I'm planning on cooking chicken. What about you guys? What are your plans for tomorrow? And is that going to include some salt? <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's something that sometimes you have a family member and they say that they're sick. You know, we just sometimes be sympathetic to them. But we need to ask, well, what's wrong? And go and do some research on there to see if we can help them. Gina said, I'm gonna, uh, going to bake a chicken, cabbage, and brown rice. Oh, wonderful. That sounds so good. How do you like uh, brown rice, Gina, versus the white rice? That's a question I get from time to time. How do you feel about brown rice versus white rice? Joe says, Foreman grilled chicken, brown rice, and broccoli. Oh, wow. Now, the Foreman grill is very healthy. It's going to definitely take all the fat and let it run off of there. And you also use in brown rice. How do you like brown rice versus white rice, Joe? Gina says she loves brown rice. Okay. You think it's more healthier to use brown rice, guys, versus uh, white rice? What do you think about that? I think it's a lot healthier than the white rice um, because the white rice uh, is uh, starchy, right, in the cup. Joe says, 
I prefer the texture of wild and brown rice. Oh, okay. All right. So there you go. It has a different texture, Joe says. See that? You know, that's something that you can't get at a restaurant hardly is brown rice. There's very, very few restaurants that I've ever known um, that you can get brown rice, uh, which is something that they should offer, really, really. If everyone that's in the um, chat room could give it a thumbs up, that would be great. We need to um, change to uh, healthier options, healthier options, you know. Um, also, you know, sugar is the next subject that I'm going to have a, a show on because that is the number one killer. I, I'm telling you, it's no one that don't know someone that's not a diabetic. And, you know, can you control diabetes? Yes. Can you change from being a diabetic? Well, you can probably never change from being a diabetic, but you can make sure that your diabetes is under control so that you don't have to worry about it. Okay, Gina says, sugar is my downfall. Why is that, Gina? Why is sugar your downfall? Diabetes is a real problem, guys, a real problem. That I have been a diabetic for uh, 30 years. That's a long time, a long time. And, you know, I wasn't really trying to uh, solve the problem. I was just doing what the doctor said. You know, they said, okay, take these pills. One time they had me on insulin and... Uh, I read up and seen what insulin do to you. I took myself off the insulin, you know, and this is my own opinion, YouTube. And I went to the doctor and I says, yeah, uh, I stopped the insulin. I said, because I got my sugar down with my diet and um, it, insulin is destroying my organ. And so he says, oh, oh, well, okay. He says, now that you took yourself off, we're going to have to just watch you. And I haven't been on the insulin since then. That was many, 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 many years ago. Uh, sugar is really, really, really bad. And so now I'm trying to um, do the right thing and, and, and make sure that I save my, my kidneys from the diabetes. Okay, Gina says uh, she was addicted to sugar from sodas and candy as a kid. Oh, goodness, yes. You see how much sugar is in a soda? Oh, my goodness. It's so much sugar in a can of soda. It is unbelievable in a candy bar. Really. And, you know, if you have uh, a big soda... You might drink two glasses of that without thinking about it at all. And it's a lot of sugar in soda, really a lot. You know, that's another company that has hooked us and uh, the, the soda companies and, and not really um, help with anybody that has diabetes or anything. And they know they have contributed to that problem big time. Sugar, for sure. You know, and, you know, how come the government is is not making them, like, do advertisement to let you know how sugar is affecting you when you drink that soda? You know, they, they make them uh, do all kind of announcements for people, for the um, stores, the companies that are selling cigarettes. They should do the same for soda. It's, it's awful. And candy. It's really awful. But, you know, thank God that now that we're grown, we can make uh, some changes of our own and our own options, right? So that we don't have to uh, be affected and we can't, we don't have to say um, at the end of it all that, you know, we didn't make a change. The change is ours. It's our choice. Okay. And we have to do that. It's very, very, very important. And to pass on this information to your kids. That is crucial. Even if your kids are grown, hang when you hang up tonight, um, pass that information over to them because 
people need to know what they're doing to their body. And you may not uh, be see the effects right now. Oh, but the effects is building up in your body and it's, it's going to come. So that's very, very, very important. Okay. Who else is affected by uh, sugar or have people in their family that is affected by sugar? And what are they going through? And do they have diabetes? That's a real, real, real problem. And let me tell you, when you have diabetes, less than less than 10 minutes from after you eat, your, 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 your um, temperature goes up. You feel real hot. Okay. And that's because the sugar is reacting that fast. And so I need to learn, and, and anyone else that's a diabetic need to learn what foods to eat and not eat so that it doesn't spike the sugar like that. And I mean, in 10 minutes, you, you haven't even digest your food, but it's that sugar is kicking in. That's very, very important. We really, really got to make some changes. Isn't that right? Okay, everybody in the chat, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. Gina, I was brought up in the country. We only drank water and iced tea, but moved to the city, and the kids were drinking sodas. Half the people in my family are diabetics. I am not. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm glad you're not. So when I do the video on uh, diabetes, um, hopefully you can uh, share the video with them um, and so that they can uh, decide that they can change things around because, you know, with my diet, I got myself off of insulin, right? So I, I, I really believe that I can get myself off of um, the metformin pills, which is the pills for a diabetic. I, I believe I can do that too, but you know, I got to uh, now make some changes. So, you know, I understand if you work and you may not have time to do all of this and everything, you know, I work, I work a full-time job and um, I still have to find time for me because if I don't find time for me, I can't go to that job. I can't, uh, do YouTube. I can't do anything. So that's very, very important for us to make some changes so that we can live longer. Thanks, Joe. You know, uh, life is something else and um, diabetes and high blood, you know, those are things that can follow a family uh, throughout. So whether it's you or aunt, a mother, a cousin, a brother, you know, if they're suffering, you're suffering because you don't want to see them suffer, right? So we we have got to educate ourselves a little better on what to do and not do. And, and also, since we're on salt, let's talk about the things that, the food that raises, um, our, uh, that have salt in it, like ham, Okay definitely has a lot of salt in it. So should you be eating ham that often or at all? That's something to, to talk about, right? Or processed lunch meat, all got salt in it, okay? Or chitlins or um, neck bone, uh, anything like that that has salt in it, you need to make a choice whether that's something you want to do or not, okay? Very, 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 very important that we we are in power, guys, and we can make these changes. Isn't that right? We, we, we got the power. We got the power. So is anyone, um, uh, did anyone think that this information was good uh, tonight to the point where you might want to consider um, 
checking out your your seasonings or your your food that you have on your, in your uh, cabinets and and that you might want to consider a change you know i know change is not overnight but if you um feel like you want to make a change then that would be really really good because you can encourage somebody else uh to make a change you know and some people say oh I don't care. I'm going to, I'm going to pass one day anyway. Well, okay. Yes, you are going to pass one day anyway. We all are. But the problem is, is you may not pass just like that. You may live and suffer as a result of uh, what you have done in the past. And you don't want that. Okay. You want to live a, a nice full life. That's very, very important. Okay. And we don't have to, we don't have to go through unnecessary changes because we are all, um, grown, we're all grown adults. We just need to know what to buy to make the changes. So that's why I wanted to bring on my, my, all of my seasonings so that you can see what's going on and, and to let you know that grandma Ray so when you see me not using salt, regular salt, you'll know why. Um, so that you can see that I'm also trying to. I don't want to be uh, on here telling you to do something that I'm not doing. I am definitely, definitely going to try. Definitely. And if everyone could give it a thumbs up that's in the chat, that's wonderful. YouTube liked the thumbs up. Did you all know that? <laughs> they love it. Okay. And that's the way they circulate the, the videos. So if you could give it a thumbs up, YouTube loves that. Gina says, this live was very informative. I look forward to many more. Thank you for your Jules, you're welcome. The, oh, listen, the one thing that um, I do is I want to share. You know, we all got to figure out what we're on earth to do, okay? What is your mission here? And whatever your mission is, you've got to do that because uh, at the end of it all, you want to be able to have accomplished something that contribute to other people's lives, right? Because that's what it's all about. We are lovers one to another. We share one to another. So my mission is to come and bring all the gifts that God has instilled upon me and share them with you. Because when I share my gifts that God gave me with you, whether that's cooking or talking about important things that mean something to your life, or um, telling you about my experiences, then that 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 can really uh, make a difference, and it can help you. Okay, Joe says, right on, Gina. Nancy says, thank you so much. Gina says, thanks, Joe. Ah, oh, that's so nice that you guys supporting each other like that. I like that. I really really like that. That is wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So listen, guys, it's been really, really great talking to you guys. Uh, I was on two nights ago and um, I, I want to do this more often. Do you think that um, this is something that I should uh, continue on a regular basis or every now and then? What are your feedback on that? Uh, because, you know, you guys let me know what I should do and not do because you are my audience, right? That's very important. So let me know what you, I, I, I heard from uh, Gina already. And uh, let's see. Gina said, please continue. Love you. Oh, I love you too, Gina. I love you very much. I love all of you guys. You guys are like my extended family, for real. You know, every day when I wake up, I think about YouTube, believe it or not, okay? So even when I'm, I'm at work and I can't, um, you know, be home to perform, 
I, I really love, love you guys. So I want you to know you're always in my heart. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And also you can comment to me to let me know other subjects that you want me to talk, touch on or talk about so that, you know, we can have a dialogue going on. Um, that would be absolutely wonderful. Okay, so thank you guys. Love you, love you, love you. Talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye. Bye, guys.